Welcome to AM News. Thanks. Good morning, Alicia. Now, Mr. Moodley, tell us in brief, what is the report all about? Um, so essentially it looks at what the current status um, is in terms of poverty, in terms of inequality, and looking at this idea of extreme wealth, the fact that um, you know, a few people are getting super rich mm -hmm. while majority of the poop, um, population remains poor. Mm -hmm. So you know, one of the key stats is the top 85 richest people in the world have the same wealth as the bottom 50% of the world's population, mm -hmm. which is quite staggering, but also that in over 30 countries, uh, inequalities are increasing, including in South Africa. All right, now with the trend, uh, as we've just uh, mentioned, mm -hmm. the rich are getting rich and the poor are getting poor. Now the report also found that people in countries around the world believe that the rich have too much influence in terms of where their country is going. Is this true or even possible? Um, it, it's certainly true. I mean, there's examples all over, including South Africa, mm -hmm. where multinational corporations or, or, or big corporations um, work very closely with governments, mm -hmm. often influencing you know, the, the policy frameworks uh, and so on. And the challenge is, so if you take key issues like tax dodging, for example, mm -hmm. which is a major issue, and the illicit flows, especially from Africa, but including from South Africa, mm. a lot of money leaves the continent very silently, uh, you know, in the night, mm -hmm. uh, through many different tactics that corporations Absolute, use. Yeah. Um, and so the fact that uh, you know governments are taking a long time to clamp down is an issue for us and you know there are many things governments can do mm. but the influence of the co uh, corporations that are working closely with governments for us is a concern all right now uh, mr proven the report says global inequality has increased to the extent that the one trillion pound combined wealth of the 85 richest people is actually equal to that of the poorest 3.5 billion Please explain that logic to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I mean, you know, the, so, so that's the fact that's been, you know, uh, calculated by economists, mm -hmm. um, and, and it kind of shows. So the systems uh, and the policies essentially favor the rich. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with more wealth, you you can accumulate much more. Absolutely. But yeah. the other problem is over generations that wealth remains within certain families mm -hmm. um, and, and therefore you know uh, is, isn't transferred uh, so for us the key thing is looking at mechanisms to ensure the transfer of money and some kind of redistribution mm -hmm. um, you know from the rich to the poor but looking at you know the laws and policies and the role of government in ensuring that happens I mean you know South Africa is a case in point mm -hmm. uh, if you look at you know Santon and Alexander uh, as one you know clear example Absolutely. but you know, it's all over the country in terms mm. of exactly where that was. It's a sits. sad reality. You live in one of the poor suburbs, yet you're looking at the, uh, the very, very poor. Now, Puvan, WEF has been meeting annually. Do you really think that they're actually achieving any of their goals? Yeah. So, you know, the World Economic Forum doesn't um, come out with resolutions. Mm -hmm. It's basically a meeting place. So a lot of sessions, you know, someone described it as like the Gramstown Arts Festival, mm -hmm. where, <laughs> you know, there's many sessions. You yes. choose where you want to go to. Mm. But largely it's about, you know, leaders coming together, sharing thoughts, sharing ideas, um, and, you know, influencing each other. Mm -hmm. So the South African delegation going there, for example, will, you know, obviously try and push and, you know, paint the picture mm -hmm. that South Africa is a good destination still to invest in. Absolutely. Um, but we're hoping that you know the South African government, amongst others, uh, will really look at this question of inequality. Because even if you have economic growth, it doesn't mean automatically you're dealing with the development challenges in Absolutely the country. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Let's look at how the whole world is actually going through a very big economic uh, change, and in fact suffering. How, what does that say? What What is a conference like this going to do to try and, and help alleviate or even you know highlight those problems? Uh, proven. Yeah, I mean I think there is some kind of acknowledgement that inequality is bad. Mm -hmm. on, on all levels in terms of uh, the economics, in mm -hmm. terms of fewer pe people you know, being able to afford things, etc. So even from an economic perspective, inequality is bad, mm. but also from a moral, ethical, Absolutely, you know, and, and, yeah. and all of those perspectives. Um, the key thing we pushing leaders here is to take some decisive you know, action uh, on a few different things. Mm -hmm. So one is to ensure uh, in terms of uh, you know, the, the tax regimes that it's progressive, mm -hmm. uh, that are the rich are being taxed much more than poor uh, people who are paying 
the same vet, for I example, think, yes. um, as you know, one, one of the aspects. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, Proven, I know you've just been saying that you'd wish that the leaders that are attending this forum would actually focus on inequality. But your advice to all the world leaders that will be attending this conference, especially for, for, for Africa, what, what, what can we expect from them? Okay. I mean, I, th I think one is acknowledging the massive inequality problem. Mm -hmm. um, Two is committing themselves to take action, um, so in terms of the laws and policies, but also to ensure that there's greater transparency, and that's been one of the problems. So mm -hmm. a lot of deals are done, you know, in dark rooms, Under behind carpet, closed, yes. uh, closed <laughs> doors, and it really it's about being more transparent for government to say, okay, we have entered into this big mining deal, mm -hmm. you know, with company X. Mm -hmm. These are the terms. This is how the country and you know people from the the mining community or mm -hmm. the rest of the citizens, you know, would benefit. So much more you know transparency in that sense mm -hmm. but also to you know make some kind of commitments in terms of dealing with illicit flows of tax havens that a lot of the you know rich countries um, yeah. you know have these tax havens so it's kind of making those commitments so they really should be sharing ideas on what formulas really work for their country to sustain the rest of the world thank you so much uh, that was Oxfam's associate country director uh, mr. Poovin Moodley let's move on